Hello, and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today, we're going to be replacing this light on my old 2002 Coleman Utah pop-up camper. So a couple things to get out of the way before I get the video started. So first is that I'm not a trailer mechanic or any kind of an expert. I'm just gonna tackle this job and figured I'd turn the camera on and let you guys watch while I did. So there's a couple of other things worth mentioning before I get started with the job. First, the pop-up is fully set up right now and it would be easier to do this job if I were able to pack it away, but I promised my son he could sleep in there tonight. The beds are all set up, so I'm just going to leave this thing set up and just squat down and work under here. The second thing I'll mention is the reason I need to replace the light in the first place is that the lens popped off while we were on our way home from a camping trip in New Hampshire a couple of weeks ago. Now, I've looked around locally and online and I can't find a lens that will fit over this light. I suppose if I had more time to look I could probably find a replacement. but. We're going to be going camping again at the end of this week, so I need to get this thing replaced before we hit the road with this camper again. So what I ended up doing is I just picked up a new marker light from Walmart, and that's what I'm going to use to replace this one. So anyway, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is drill out these two rivets that hold the old fixture in place. So you can see all that this thing is is a plastic back piece with sort of a bulb socket. And you can see here, the previous owner of the camper installed these LED bulbs instead of the traditional incandescent bulbs. What I'm gonna do now is pull out as much slack as I can from these wires, and then I'm gonna clip them right at the socket. And now what I'm gonna do is strip the ends just to expose a little bit of the copper. So next up, I'm gonna try and figure out which wire is the positive wire. You can see I've got my meter set up over here and I've got it set to the DC volts scale. And I'm gonna probe the wires with the meter probes. If I get a positive reading on the meter, that means that I've got them oriented so that the red lead is connected to the positive wire and the black one to the negative. If I see a negative reading on the meter, that'll mean I have them swapped. Either way, once I figure it out, I'm going to mark the positive wire with some red tape so I know which one is which. And in order to get voltage back here, I'm going to go turn the lights on. As you can hopefully see on the meter right now, I'm getting negative 12 volts. So that means the black lead was connected to the positive wire. If I turn them around, that should make it positive. So now I swapped the leads and the voltage is reading positive. So that means this one is the positive wire. So here's a look at the marker light that I got from Walmart. Now this was a pretty inexpensive unit. I think it was around five or six dollars. I'm gonna to have to make some modifications to it in order to make it work on my trailer. You may be able to notice that there's only one wire coming off the back of this thing right now. And I presume that is the positive. I think this thing is designed to screw into something that has a metal chassis that is connected to the return or ground of the electrical system. But of course I'm dealing with a plastic bodied camper so I'm gonna to need to add a return or ground wire to this thing in order to make it work. So I'm gonna take it apart and we'll see what's inside. And you can see unlike the old marker light that uses a replaceable bulb, this just has two LEDs here. But it does surprisingly enough have a nice weather stripping gasket or here to keep the moisture out. Anyway, what I need to do now is pull this piece off to see what's underneath. So inside the marker light, there's actually a circuit board with white solder mask coating on it and two terminals. You can see this terminal over here has the wire soldered to it. That, like I said, is the positive terminal. And then you can see over here, this is the negative terminal. All I should have to do is tack a new wire in here and we should be in business. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna pull this screw out of here that holds the circuit board into the housing. And there's actually two reasons I'm gonna do that. The first is that it'll make soldering the wire on here just a little bit easier. The second and more important reason is that I need to be able to mount this fixture to the trailer and I want to put rivets through the back of the housing but not through the holes in this circuit board. So <laughs> let's pull this screw out and get this circuit board out of here. So I think what I'm going to do is drill a hole <laughs> in the middle of this thing so that the wires can fish right through the middle. So the original backing plate didn't have any kind of weather stripping on it. But I think just for good measure, I'm gonna add some butyl tape onto this one to try and prevent leaks. 
So now I'll run these wires through the hole that I drilled in the center of the backing plate. And I'll get these two end holes aligned to the holes in the camper body. I've got some rivets, 3 16 inch in diameter and half inch grip area that I'm going to try and use to reaffix the backing plate to the camper. That feels like it's on there pretty secure now. So now I want to reinstall the circuit board into the backing plate. So as I said earlier in the video, this came with only one wire attached. So my original plan was going to be to use the original wire that was attached to the positive side, tie that into the positive wire on the camper, and then I added a negative wire here to tie into the negative wire on the camper. But I think what I'm going to do is actually remove both of these wires and just solder the camper wires directly to the circuit board. So there really isn't anything on the back of this circuit board that can short out to these two rivet heads. And the rivet heads are just tied into the plastic body of the camper. But just for the sake of paranoia, <laughs> I'm going to put some electrical tape over the heads of these rivets just to be safe. So now I'm going to reinstall the circuit board to the backing plate. And I'm going to keep the trailer wires behind the board so that when I route them down, they don't block the LED elements. So I've got my soldering iron all warmed up and I'm just going to desolder this wire that I put on here. And then I'm also going to unsolder the one from the factory. So now I'm going to add a little bit of this flux to the old wiring to help the solder flow. So now I'm going to solder the positive wire to the pad that the original factory wire was soldered to. So now I'm going to solder the negative wire to the spot where I originally attached my extra wire. I'm going to add a little solder there first and then I'll bring the wire in and tack it in place. So now I'm going to take the slack out of these wires so that they don't interfere with the rest of the light assembly when I put it back together. Okay, the moment of truth. Let's see if this thing is going to work. Okay, turn it on. Okay, so there you go. Looks like it's working. So now I'll just reinstall the reflector and put the lens cover on. So this job turned out to be a little more complicated than it probably needed to be, but I think I'm all set now. If you enjoyed the video or found it useful, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. If you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider visiting my Amazon store, which is linked in the description below. Thanks for watching. This is one of those... Oh, bro.